Hi, everybody. Welcome to Elmville Community Church. Um, I'm not actually at the church right now. Um, you may not have noticed that. But then it's COVID, so only Steve's at the church. Um, so, you know, that's how it goes. Anyway, uh, welcome to Elmville Community Church. We are, uh, if you're new to us, um, we're happy to have you. And I'd just like to kind of give you a bit of an idea what Elmville Community Church is about. We are a non-denominational church, evangelical, that uh, is just trying to authentically uh, work through how we become more like Jesus. Um, and we're doing that with um, as much uh, help from each other as we can. And there are dogs at the campground, just so you know. Um, so that's what we're about. Um, and we also have really good coffee when we actually get together, but we can't do that right now. So, uh, the announcements. I've got uh, a barky dog, and um, we also have Shareware is going to open up um, again this week. So it's going to be by appointment and or by chance. Um, it's going to be Wednesday or Wednesday and Thursdays. It's going to be open. Um, you're going to have a 15-minute slot that's going to uh, where you can come in and shop. Uh, you'll have to wear a mask. And we're not doing any try-ons, and there's no washroom access. So uh, call the office or email uh, Margaret to book your time. And uh, we will be also accepting uh, donations again. Um, and that will get put aside for a reason for the you know three days or whatever is required to make sure it's safe and before it's put out. So uh, shareware is open, so that's awesome. Um, Steve ha is working on uh, his summer modified hours. So he's going to be up north, uh, up close to where I am actually, um, with his family from Monday to Wednesday. So he's going to be, uh, he'll be available and around Thursday to Sunday. Um, and this is part of his summer vacation um, plan. Um, congratulations to Tadia and Matt Berbers, who had the little baby girl. Emery and Burbers. So uh, she was born last uh, Saturday. And what it says here is that mom and daughter are doing great. So congratulations. That's exciting. Um, oh, more excitement. The plan for reopening for us to get together in the service is... Uh, we're actually going to be doing in-person services at this point. We're planning to anyway. Uh, September 13th. Um, we're they're looking at uh, alternative locations because our space is so small and has one in entrance and exit and all that stuff. So uh, we're looking at, looking at options, and um, there's a good chance that the plan will change between now and then, um, just because that's kind of how COVID has been going. So uh, Mark that uh, September 13th on your calendar um, and we'll see if that actually happens. So it'll be like a contest. Um, backyard parties, like kind of like the one I'm having right here. Uh, they were awesome. They were Saturday night and um, hopefully you guys all got to one so I don't even have to tell you how awesome they were. Um, it, if you did, I know for sure you're going to be wanting to know when the next one is. If you didn't get to one, you're going to want to know when the next one is anyway because you want to get to one. So um, they're planning the next round, uh, August 15th. So you need to look at uh, getting that done. Uh, putting it on your calendar and you'll be all set. The only other thing I have on my phone in the announcements are a thumbs up and a winky unicorn with his tongue stuck out for some reason. So anyway, those are the announcements. Uh, have a great day, and um, see if we can find a place like this to spend some time over the next little bit. Take care. Bye now. Well, <laughs> thank you, Rick, for that. Um, I don't know what to say about that. I, I like the, uh, the added-in sound effects of red squirrels and dogs and... Crackling fire. Crackling fire. Mm -hmm. Uh, you've got some incredible special effects. Uh, can you imagine that Rick was simply in front of a green screen? Um, Very amazing. impressive, Rick. Technology is amazing. <clears throat> Welcome to Elmville Community Church. I'm here. I'm Steve, and this is Charlotte, I'm my Charlotte. wife. 
Uh, I was told. Are we going to look here or there? Because you're looking. Here. I don't know. Which See, if I look at the screen, it looks like I'm looking above people. Anyways, oh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just focus my attention there. here. Anyways, welcome to Elmville Community Church. Last night was a lot of fun. Um, actually, we've got uh, some pictures from our backyard parties. Uh, as Rick said, we're going to do them again uh, in the next uh, in the next while, uh, likely sometime in August. I think we've picked a, a soft date of August the 15th. So here's a few pictures from the... Now, I, I need to preface this. We didn't get pictures from one of the places because they were having too much fun. So... Well, what happened is, okay. We'll do so this, this is the, the Laidlaw party. Um, that's Bob and Ruth and Brian and... Uh, Some masked people. Margaret and Dave, I think, and John and Kathy. Uh, and then another picture. I think Margaret and Dave are just wearing the masks to be fun. I think, well, let's look closer at Dave in this one. He's not wearing that a mask. That is not a mask. Not people. a mask. That is a beard. And here's the Hunter's party. Uh, this is John and Sheila uh, and their kids. Jillian and Kate, and then there's Charlotte, and I'm actually taking the picture here, and uh, Susan and Connie at that party, and it was fantastic. They We actually had ice cream sandwiches, so <laughs> there, there yeah, you go. And then and we, Dr. Pepper, I felt like I was at youth group. And then this is the Cockrum's oh. porch party. What? I'm trying to talk too, and you're talking over me. Oh, I'm so sorry, Charlotte. So what I was saying is... I had an ice cream sandwich and a Dr. Pepper, and it felt very much like youth group having so many treats. Lots of sugar. So Cockrum's had the Ma's there and the Cockrum's themselves, and then we showed up as well. And then Joe and Judy Bowl were there as well, and it was Judy's birthday. Um, so it was fantastic uh, seeing all of them. Now, Charlotte and I had hoped to make the rounds of all the parties. We were thinking, okay, we'll start at the Hunters, and we'll work our way back into... Uh, you know, to the Cockrums and then to the Laidlaws and then we'd end up at the Simons. Anyways, by the time we left the Cockrums, it was like 10 o'clock. So obviously we did sure. not make it to all the parties. We failed. We, we got sucked in with our people. It's hard to leave. Right? It, it is hard to leave, especially, you know, when you haven't, you know, been... Actually, I've been face-to-face -face with a lot of them um, over the last while. Uh, but anyways, you just enjoy, they're, they're your people, you right? People. You just enjoy the company you're enjoying and the stories you're enjoying and that it's hard to kind of peel away and move on. That's true. It's so true. sorry that we didn't make it out to the La Fontaine parties, but we sorry, had a guys. wonderful time in the Elmville area parties. We did. We did. Um, what are some other things that we can talk about real quick here? Um, office hours. Uh, office, as you know, is open. Uh, Rick had shared as well about reopening of shareware. So that's happening this week. Um, again, it's going to be by appointment or by chance. So if you book an appointment, your appointment is secure. Um, so be sure to call or email Margaret uh, to get a, an appointment spot for shareware. Uh, get your clothes and, and stuff in need. And spread the word on that, guys. We put the post up on our Facebook page and our Facebook group. Uh, but we made that post shareable. So if there's people you know that um, frequent that frequent shareware, uh, we need to get the word out that it's uh, that it's reopening. We are taking um, <clears throat> we are taking donations for that, and I did I know Rick mentioned uh, a minute ago as well uh, that we're going to put the donations aside. <laughs> Sorry, we're, we're just looking at <laughs> Caroline's comments about the party. <laughs> okay. okay. I'm distracted by that. Uh, we're going to put the donations aside, mark the date on them, and leave them probably for upwards of uh, two weeks just so that if there's any viruses alive in them, they'll be dead. Uh, anyway, so that's what we're planning on doing. Um, our reopening plan is uh, September the 13th as well. We do need to recruit some volunteers for that because we need to... Um, there's just more need for volunteer. We need volunteers for live stream, obviously sound, uh, setup, cleaning. And so it's a lot more involved trying to run a program during this time of COVID uh, or a Sunday morning this, during this time of COVID than it is a regular time. We're also looking at uh, alternative um, locations for uh, for worship. So I know Rick mentioned all of that. I don't know why I always have to re-announce all the announcements that he made. So I'm going to stop doing that right now. Um, what else? I don't know. Things that we need to talk about to tell the Oh, truth. next week is Communion Sunday, which means it's also Testimony Sunday. And so we are trying to track down a few people to do testimonies for next week. So if that's something that you'd like to be a part of, um, if you've got like a burning desire in your heart, it doesn't even have to be a burning desire. It could be a dull desire. <laughs> 
in your heart to share what God is doing. If you think Jesus is okay, send us a video. Send us a video. Uh, we'd love to just hear, obviously, from the congregation. One of the things that we've been wanting to do is put the congregation in front of the congregation uh, so that you know that we're all still in this together. And um, But if you have a testimony that you'd like to share, uh, send it to us. We're going to try to get around to a couple places, or I'm going to try to get around to a couple places this week and possibly record some people who haven't had access to doing some of those things. So uh, Communion Sunday, next Sunday. And then we also have the following Sunday, a guest speaker, uh, David Mann from Life 100.3 is going to be sharing. So that's all. Prayer. Okay. Do we want to put up that picture of Tadia and <clears throat> yeah, go ahead. baby Emery? Because <gasps> we only saw that. Oh, look at how cute she is. We only saw that um, fresh born baby picture where she was really squishy. <laughs> And so, and there she is. Isn't she so sweet? Little Emery. So Tadia and Emery. So they are doing well, but they're having some minor complications, some regular, normal mothering complications. And it's just, you know, moms, you guys know what it's like to have that first week of baby and how completely encompassing and overwhelming it is. And then they've got two little ones at home already. And so we're going to continue to pray for Tadia and Matt, Emery and the boys. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So actually, I'm not going to announce all the things we need to pray for. I'm just going to pray. So um, if you guys would join us. In and also, prayer. guys, as we started last week, if you have prayer requests, leave them in the comment section and we will we will pray for mm -hmm. those prayer requests mm -hmm. as they come in. And I know as people are seeing those prayer requests in the comment section, uh, they'll join their hearts in praying for them as well. So absolutely. Um, we're going to honor that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's pray. Let's pray. Father, we are just so grateful to know you and to depend on you. And no matter where we're at this morning as individuals, whether we're feeling joyous and on top of the world or whether we're feeling heavy and draggy and wherever we may be, um, we know that if we turn our attention towards you, there is hope and there is goodness and there is a plan in place for our lives. And you are the winner and you have victory and you have things set out in place that makes sense in the end. And so we may not get it right now, Jesus, wherever we're at, but we trust you. So Jesus, we just declare as a congregation, as a body, that you are our God, that we don't have to have things figured out. You have things figured out. And we, we are so grateful to be able to depend on you in that way. And so Jesus, we, we know that uh, we've got our hearts set on different things in our lives, but you are the one who determines our steps. And so would you just give us that next step, Jesus, each one of us, no matter where we are, give us that next step um, uh, that we would walk in your ways, Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so, Father, with all of that in mind, we do just lift up the people in need in our congregation. Uh, Father, we ask a blessing over Tadia and Matt and family, and especially, again, just a blessing over Tadia. Mm -hmm. uh, that role as a new mom is like the most intense experience I've ever had personally in so we just pray your blessing over um, over Tadia as she tries to learn this new little baby and um, as she tries to iron out the wrinkles that come with motherhood. And, and we just pray, Father, that you would give her wisdom and insight on how to do this or that and that she would, um, yeah, that things would just click. So bless them, Jesus. And we just pray your peace and your blessing over that family, that household, and over Emory, Jesus, that you would mark her with your destiny and the things that you have for her father would be mighty and awesome. Mm -hmm. And I looked up her name and Emery means industrious. And so we just pray mm -hmm. your blessing over that industrious little girl that, oh, that she would just be one who um, sets her course towards righteousness and goes for it and works hard and fights hard for the things you have for her, Jesus. So bless her. In your powerful and awesome name, we ask it. Mm -hmm. um, father, we pray for Connie. Um, as she even said this morning that she's tired and she's a little weary these days, God, and she's got different things going on with her health and with her family. And so Jesus, really, she was one I was thinking about this morning that we trust you, that we don't have it figured out. We don't know what's coming, but we trust you. And I know, that, Lord, that Connie just has a beautiful trust. Mm -hmm. And so, Father, I pray that she would um, find joy today in you, that the things, those gifts, those incredible gifts you've given to her, uh, where joy lays, I pray that she would grab hold of those things, God, and sing, sing uh, play her guitar, play her piano, uh, hang out with Curry, just those things that you've given her joy from, God. 
that you would lean into those things and see those as your gift and your faithfulness to her. Um, and Father, we pray for some some clicks for her as far as what's going on with her health and even for Claire, God, that you would, um, you know, finalize things for him a bit as far as where he's going to be and things. So, so bless them, please, Jesus. Uh, Father, we pray for Kevin, um, Judy, and Joe's nephew. Father, for the situation that uh, he is in in his health, we pray, God, that you would work a miracle for him, God, and that his uh, all these treatments that he's undergoing right now would be successful for his wellness, God. Mm. And Father, we pray for a blessing um, over the family that they will have incredible um, like gumption and will and peace through this, Jesus. Yeah. Um, and that it would be a testimony to your faithfulness in their lives. So bless them, please, Jesus. Father, we are so grateful that you have provided a way for Kelly Dunlop to be back in Canada. Mm -hmm. And it must just feel so amazing for her to step out of that door, that trailer, just have Canada under her feet. And so we ask your blessing over Kelly and the plans that you have for her while she's here in this area. Um, that she has a church home and a family that's here that's been praying for her and loving her and um, I don't know. I think that's pretty cool. So we just pray your blessing over Kelly as she's uh, settling back into life here. We pray that you would be the lifter of her head, that she would find many things that bring her peace and joy as she um, discovers your faithfulness, God. And Father, um, we pray also for Michaela, Brian Robb's niece, who has undergone surgery recently um, because of bone marrow uh, cancer. And so Father, she's going to need an incredible spirit to persevere in life and to move forward and to have um, joy and and hope. And I just, I just pray that this will be an incredible story, that she will latch a hold of you and live life to the full um, mm -hmm. and that she will be an overcomer, one who is victorious. And so yeah. we pray that blessing, that kind of spirit over Michaela, Jesus. And Father, just as we've been talking this morning that ECC is moving towards plans of reopening, God, we pray that you would really just determine our steps and all of that. We look forward to being together, but God, we don't, it's almost like this has given us an opportunity for the next thing. And God, we don't want to miss the next thing for yeah. this church. Yeah. And so, Father, we pray that you would just orchestrate things and move us towards um, the next thing that you have for us. And we are grateful that you are God. And we pray that you would open the doors that we need. And we pray that our congregation would be prayerful. And so we just invite them into this journey of being excited with us about um, what the next thing may be for ECC. Mm -hmm. So I pray that you would stir our hearts towards prayer for our body, that we would be as effective as we possibly can be in sharing who you are with this area, Jesus. So thank you, Lord. Um, we celebrate you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, all right, so that is uh, prayer time. We're going to go into a time of worship now. Um, do we have to say anything about worship? I don't know. Worship, guys. This is an opportunity to connect with God. Um, it's one of these things that God um, has promised that he inhabits the praises of his people. And so um, worship is a very sacred time. And so for you to engage in it, is going to be uh, absolutely important. So we actually had a really cool worship time last Sunday, which was neat. Oh yeah, yeah. Cool. Because we were at, like the sickles, the four shoes, and myself were all we were up at the cottage together. And so <clears throat> the women, like Mom, Carrie, and I, were singing, and we had like the kids in our laps, and we were rocking with them. And you know, we were kind of calling out the words so the kids could sing along. And, Beautiful. And it was like it was great. So cool. Yeah. All right. So here is Brent. Well, good morning. Uh, so this morning I'm going to be worshiping from my couch. Uh, I don't know if you are too, but um, just as we, um, yeah, I, I really actually like doing this living room piece in some ways. Like I really wish we could be all in the living room doing it, but I've always had kind of this thing where I've loved small groups leading worship, like in a small group setting. Um, like even when I think about like one of my favorite uh, worship bands, uh, they're called United Pursuit and they all started just uh leading worship in living rooms and they still have kind of that passion that they try to um, do kind of that, um, you know, that small group kind of, kind of worship. And I just love that. But um, we're actually going to be singing one of their songs today, but 
uh, just before we get into worship, I'm just going to uh, pray and, and we'll get going here. So, um, God, we, uh, we want to have our eyes fixed on you this morning. We love you. Um, Father, we, I just pray that like any uh, distractions around us, God, that we can kind of eliminate those this morning, God, um, uh, even though we're in our homes, that we can keep our eyes fixed on you, God, that we can sense your presence this morning, um, and God, that this will be true, authentic worship that we do um, as a family. So God, um, bless this worship time. In Jesus' name, amen. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord Almighty, for my soul longs. Even faints for you. Hear my heart is satisfied within your presence. I sing beneath the shadow of your wings. There is one day in your courts, there is one day in your house, there is one day in your courts, thousands elsewhere. There is one day in your courts, there is one day in your house, there is one day in your courts, thousands elsewhere, thousands elsewhere. thing I ask and I would seek to see your beauty to find you in the place your glory dwells one thing I ask and I would seek
presence elsewhere. Better is one day. Better is one day. Better is one day. Thousands elsewhere. Thousands elsewhere. And God, we seek you this morning.
child I'm a child to you Find me in the dust See no amount of truth Can separate us I will rejoice In the simple gospel I will rejoice in you, Lord. I will rejoice in the simple gospel. I will rejoice in you, Lord. In you, again I will rejoice I will rejoice in the simple gospel I will rejoice in you Lord I will rejoice in the simple gospel I will rejoice in you, Lord. Nothing will more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare. You are living home. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen the sweetest of loves. When my heart becomes free, and my shame is undone. Your presence.
must become aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. your prayer this morning. Sing that. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness, Lord. Goodness, Lord. We press into you, oh God. We look to you, God. We're not far away. Not just in the church building, you within us. All around us, you go before us. So, God, we want to see you, God. We want to know you, God. We want to know you so much more. We want to live your gospel, God. God, help us see you. Help us find you wherever we're at, God. We know you're not hard to find. Just sometimes we got to put on the lens to find you in a way. But, Lord, um, we just pray, pray you bless this service. Bless everyone who's who's uh, who's here this morning. In Jesus' name, Amen. <laughs> Thanks so much, Brent. Um, so uh, we're hearing reports of storms coming through. So uh, 
if for whatever reason we get cut off from this live feed. Done. No. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about on the way here. So he's like, okay, here's the plan. So if the power goes out. If the power goes out, we'll try to pick it up on our phones uh, and we'll see how that goes. Uh, anyway, so that's that's the plan if anything happens there. Welcome again, Allenville Community Church. Uh, Charlotte, Steve, she's my wife. Husband. Yeah. Uh, and we'd, we're inside, but we don't have masks on. But we figure since the door's locked, we're good. We did have a visitor stop this we morning. We did have though. a visitor, which was really interesting. Uh, somebody stopped by the church this morning, a friend of Bob and Ruth Keller's uh, named Roger. Roger says hi. Bob Roger and says hi. Uh, and he was hoping that we would be open for in-person worship. You should have worship. invited him to come and sit He corner. could have come and sat, but I thought that would have been a little weird. So uh, anyways, we're going to we get do, in. We do weird. Yeah, we do. Um, anyways, we're going to get into our message. As you know, we've been uh, rocking a series uh, called Fully Devoted, and it's about... Um, Notable figures from history who lived out elements of discipleship in their own lives. Uh, and like basically what we're doing is we're, we're um, taking their lives and exegeting them a little bit and then looking at scripture, exegeting it, and then doing some take homes from the inspiration and the example of their mm -hmm. lives. They're, they're like our living sermon illustrations. It's like Paul saying, follow me as I follow Christ. So Precisely. We, so we're watching some of these people who have followed Christ so that we can see again what we are to be like as followers of Christ. That's right. Uh, anyway, so yeah, that's what we're doing over the next little while. Everybody likes a story. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to dive into stories of these notable people. So far, we've covered uh, Sir Thomas More, and we've covered um, William and Catherine Booth. That was very uh, from cool. the Salvation Army. That was an wasn't that awesome last awesome week, guys? I message. really thought it was really cool. I, I really enjoyed that too. Like what incredible people! And um, I shouldn't say this to the church, but I was then looking at jobs in the Salvation Army because I was so inspired <laughs> <laughs> myself. We can do that here at this church. That's true. We can. We don't have to come under an umbrella. Uh, I think if anything, Jesus is probably enough of an umbrella. Yeah. If anything, William and Catherine Booth uh, model to us is that we don't need necessarily organizational structure. Um, also, if if you need to catch up on those uh, on those messages, uh, YouTube is the place to do it because it's going to be in a much higher quality uh, than on Facebook. That we're that's as we're learning and a lot easier to find as well. So we do have a YouTube channel. Go over there. You can watch stuff in HD and it's really quite nice. Or our website where we're reposting the videos from that. So if you guys are interested in the series, want to catch up again, that's the place to do it. Okay, so this Sunday, we're going to be spending some time on uh, the story of a man named Frederick Douglass. Um, put up your hand if you know who Frederick Douglass is. All right, cool. Uh, he uh, was born as a slave sometime in 1818. Uh, they didn't keep records of his, uh, they knew that what month he was born in. Was it February? It was in February, yeah. Uh, but they, and they know the year, so it was 1818. Uh, but they didn't really keep records of slaves because they weren't really considered people at that point in time. They were chattels. They were um, tools. And it was horribly unfortunate that, that that slavery happened. Anyway, so he eventually escaped slavery and became a great American orator, uh, writer, abolitionist, uh, advisor to several presidents, uh, became a pastor as well. Uh, and so this morning I'm going to be reading from, again, Bearded Gospel Men. Great book. And so this get, gives us a bit of a snapshot of uh, the story, the life of uh, these Friday. characters. And what we're going to do uh, yesterday, no, Friday, I spent some time researching again uh, Frederick Douglass to pull out more um, details on his life. And so I'll try to pull those into, into the message a little bit. And then what we're going to do is we're going to kick him around a little bit and we're going to pull in some scripture. Ah, speaking of scripture. We need to show our scripture reading. So here is oh. Lynn and Trin Perpeet reading our scripture for today, which is found in Galatians chapter 5. Hi, I'm Lynn Perpeet, and this is Trinity Perpeet, in case you don't know us. And we're reading uh, from the Living Bible, not the New Living Bible, the Living Bible. And um, Galatians 5, 1, 13 to 26. Um, so Christ has made us free. Now make sure that you stay free and don't get all tied up again in the chains of slavery to Jewish law and ceremonies. 
For dear brothers, you have been given freedom, not freedom to do wrong, but freedom to love and serve each other. For the whole law can be summed up in this one command, love others as you love yourself. But if instead of showing love among yourselves, you are always critical and catty, watch out, beware of ruining each other. I advise you to obey only the Holy Spirit's instructions. He will tell you where to go and what to do, and then you won't always be doing the wrong things your evil nature wants you to. For we naturally love to do evil things that are just the opposite from the things that the Holy Spirit tells us to do. And the good things we want to do when the Spirit has his way with us are just the opposite of our natural desires. These two forces within us are constantly fighting each other to win control over us, and our wishes are never free from the pressures. When you are guided by the Holy Spirit, you need no longer force yourself to obey Jewish laws. It's 19. But when you follow your own wrong inclinations, your lives will produce these evil results. Impure thoughts, eagerness for lustful pleasure, idolatry, spiritism that is encouraging the activity of demons, hatred and fighting, jealousy and anger, constant effort to get the best for yourself, complaints and criticisms, the feeling that everyone else is wrong except those in your own little group, and there will be wrong doctrine, envy, murder, drunkenness, wild parties, and all that sort of thing. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. But when the Holy Spirit controls our lives, he will produce this kind of fruit in us. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And here there is no conflict with Jewish laws. Those who belong to Christ have nailed their natural evil desires to his cross and crucified them there. If we are living now by the Holy Spirit's power, let us follow the Holy Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Then we won't need to look for honors and popularity, which lead us lead to jealousy and hard feelings. Thank you, Prophets, for that. Um, so again, our scripture today is Colossians chapter 5, verses 1, and then down. Galatians. To, chapter sorry, Galatians uh, chapter 5. Verses one, verse 1, and then down, uh, verses 13 to 26. All right, so Frederick Douglass from this story here. Um, quote of the day, one and God makes a majority. I love it. Um, and then again, uh, Luke 11, verse 39, it says, The Lord said to him, Now then, you Pharisees, clean the outside of the cup and dish, but inside you are full of greed and wickedness. So you can't talk about the history of American civil rights uh, without mentioning the magnificently bearded Frederick Douglass. Originally named Frederick Augustus Washington Bailey. Um, actually, I should put this up here for a sec. <clears throat> I wonder who had the authority to name him. Do you think his mother would have named him? I don't know. It's interesting, eh? Yeah. Because those are pretty like lofty names, like Augustus Washington. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, originally named Frederick Augustus Washington Bailey, Douglas was born in Maryland around 1818. Slaves rarely knew their exact birth date, so Douglas later chose Valentine's Day as his birthday. His father was likely uh, his owner or the overseer, um, and his mother died when he was young. Um, one of the things that we learn is that uh, mothers didn't actually raise their children. In, in the case of uh, Frederick, or often didn't. Often didn't. Um, he was removed from his mom from a young age, and then he was actually raised by his grandmother so his mother could continue the work uh, on the plantation. Um, owners forbade their slaves to learn how to read and write. Uh, they'd uh, then have the power to write their own passes. Uh, but Douglas learned the alphabet from his master's wife at age 12, and later traded food uh, for lessons from neighboring white children. He started reading Bible verses and longed for a father figure in his life. And here's a quote from his biography here. Okay, it says, I was not more than 13 years old when in my loneliness and de destitution, I longed for someone to whom I could go as to a father and protector. The preaching of a white Methodist minister named Hansen was the me uh, means of causing me to feel that in God I had such a friend. He thought, the preacher thought, that all men, great and small, bond and free, were sinners in the sight of God, that they were by nature rebels against his government, and that they must repent of their sins and be reconciled to God through Christ. I cannot say that I had a very distinct notion of what was required of me, but one thing I did know well, I was wretched and had no means of making myself otherwise. That's cool. I, yeah. I was wretched and had no means of making myself otherwise. I consulted a good old colored man named Charles Lawson, and in tones of holy affection, he told me to pray and to cast all my cares upon God. 
This I sought to do, and though, though for weeks I was poor, broken-hearted mourner, traveling through doubts and fears, I finally found my burden lightened and my heart relieved. I loved all of mankind, slave owners not accepted, though I abhorred slavery more than ever. It's so cool. So he found a love for people, but then he found an incredible disdain for, for slavery through his his own salvation through his own redemption. But that he was also loving the slave owner. Absolutely. Slave owner. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, which, I, is, which is a supernatural love. That's absolutely. A love, That's a right? miraculous love. So this is a, like a legit salvation story here. Mm-hmm. I saw the world in a new light and my great concern was to have everybody converted. My desire to learn increased and especially uh, did I want a thorough acquaintance with the contents of the Bible. Um, so Douglas continued to read every newspaper or pamphlet he could find. They formed his political uh, views on human rights. And by the age of 16, he was teaching the New Testament uh, to a group of 40 other slaves. So he's 16 and he has a secret Sunday school happening. And he's teaching 40 other slaves to read from the New Testament. For the rest of his life, he made it clear, once you learn to read, you will be forever free. At the age of 20, on his third attempt, and with the help of his soon-to-be wife, uh, Douglas impersonated a sailor and escaped from slavery. The two were wed and took their name from the hero of Sir Walter Scott's uh, uh, The Lady of the Lake. Douglas became a preacher the following year, uh, despite the occasional mob beating. I I love that. That, That's like, despite the occasional mob beating, Douglas toured the nation with the American Anti-Slavery Society. He published his autobiography, which became an instant bestseller. Now, here's a cool thing is um, people had dehumanized slaves so much uh, that they had kind of almost removed their stories from their own consciousness. And so uh, when Douglas uh, learned how to read and write and he wrote his own biography, what happened is the life and the feelings and the emotions of this former slave were now in the hands of people who had dehumanized slavery or dehumanized slaves. And so it became a great a part of the great awakening in the United States as far as the abolition movement and across the world uh, because he was able to, to sit down and write out his uh, his memoirs, really. Uh, it's phenomenal, eh? Mm-hmm. And, um, and you can guys, you guys can get this really easily. Like I was looking up last night, if you go on to audiobooks or whatever, a lot of people, a lot of audiobooks have like the his story written there. And yeah, yeah it's really interesting. Um, He was forced to move to Europe for two years to evade being captured and eventually bought his freedom. Uh, Douglas uh, published five newspapers and spoke freely about race, rights, and faith as he wrote in his biography. And here's a quote here. Between the Christianity of this land and the Christianity of Christ, I recognize the widest possible difference. So wide that to receive the one as good, pure, and holy is of necessity to reject the other as bad, corrupt, and wicked. I love the pure, peaceable, and impartial Christianity of Christ. I therefore hate the corrupt, slave-holding, women-whipping, cradle-plundering, partial, and hypocritical Christianity of this land. Indeed, I can see no reason uh, but the most deceitful one for calling the religion of this land Christianity. So he was like, again, he was a, a religious pioneer calling uh, the church in America out of its... Um, slumber as far as human rights were concerned well even that song we sang this morning right like laying down my religion laying down my right? religion yeah and i want like, to know you lord and I, steve and i had a little conversation about this yesterday about the idea of like um like how sad it is that the world would only know what do they call it here the hypocritical christianity of this land yeah right and that's that's what the world sees when they think about christians they don't they don't see the authentic true believers as we try to pursue the ways of christ but they see religion, they see Christianity as as the hypocritical Christianity of this land. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, Douglas, uh, Douglas believed in equal rights. So I'm just going to say one more thing. So that becomes like a major barrier for us as believers in sharing our faith with people. Because their perspective of what Christianity is often isn't what Christianity is at all. Yeah, right. And they, so we have to repaint the picture of what it is to follow Jesus. They, they see, you know, um, 
the veneer of Christianity as presented in the media or as presented in mainline mainline Christian culture, culture, etc. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Douglas believed in equal rights for all people, including black people, women, First Nations people and immigrants. He was the only African American to attend the first women's rights convention in 1848. He argued that he couldn't accept the right to vote as a black man if women couldn't do the same. He was an advisor to Presidents Lincoln and Johnson on African-American welfare. After the Civil War, Douglas served as president of the Freedman's Savings Bank, uh, then was U.S. Uh, ambassador to the Dominican Republic, and later served as a minister resident and council general to the Republic of Haiti. He was the first That's black cool. man uh, to hold a high-ranking government position, and he was the first African-American to appear on a presidential ballot when he was nominated as vice president alongside Victoria Woodhull, the first woman to run for president of the United States. He often remarked, I would unite with anybody to do right and with nobody to do wrong. Frederick Douglass died just a few days after his birthday on February 20th, 1895. All right, so here's some things that you're going to learn about Frederick Douglass is that he was passionate about freedom okay uh, he was not just passionate about his own freedom and fighting for his own freedom uh, but he was passionate about using the freedom that he ended up gaining uh, to fight for the freedom of others of anybody not just his cause yes as a black man trying to fight for slavery fight against slavery but anybody who was in a place of un in injustice injustice he was trying to fight for those yeah individuals as well. Absolutely. Uh, so whenever he saw injustice and whenever he saw people being um, constrained or without the human rights that they deserve, uh, and he got his idea of human rights from the scriptures, uh, it wasn't just all political bent, it was from the scriptures, uh, he would fight and he would rally for the rights of those people. So there's a few things that aren't mentioned in the book um, that I want to highlight on. And one of them is uh, when he was uh, learning to read. He was actually his slave owner, uh, lived out in the country, and um, Frederick was moved from the country plantations to work on the farm into a family in the city of Baltimore, um, and they were named Hugh and Sophia Old, and uh, they lived in Baltimore, Maryland, and he was moved there when he was eight years old, okay? And so Sophia, who was the slave owner's uh, wife. wife, taught Frederick how to read in secret when he was 12. Uh, she taught him the alphabet and basically the basics of learning to read, the building blocks of learning to read. And it was really unusual for any slaveholder to take any interest in the education of a slave. And so she needed to keep it secret uh, from everybody, but she obviously had a compassion uh, for uh, Frederick. And, and but I wonder if, it, if she initiated it or if he was just so faithful and good to her and then he asked her. You know a, I mean? Yeah, who knows, eh? Um, so Sophia Old hid it from her husband, but Hugh found out a couple years later. And this is the, the rant of Hugh Old. He ranted, if you teach a slave to read and write, they will more readily want to become free. And this lecture, which was intended to demoralize and discourage Frederick from learning, it planted actually a seed of hope in him. And so this thing that was meant to demoralize him actually uh, caused him this great passion. He's like, okay, I can actually be free if I learn how to, to read and write. And so he had already received the building blocks of, of his education from Sophia. And so after he was um, not able to learn from her any longer, he continued the journey because he heard that word and he became passionate about his own education. Um, so he continued to find ways to teach himself to read. In the book, it says that he traded food uh, for uh, lessons to read from white children in the community. Um, but also what he did is he collected books, newspapers, he had a copy of the scriptures, uh, political pamphlets, and he accumulated this great library of stuff which he uh, hid from his slave owners. He wasn't just learning to read, though. Uh, he was learning actually how the world worked, right? He, how, he was learning the heart of God. He, he become, became passionate for what the scriptures had to say. And during this time, he learned about human rights, about the abolitionist movement. And while his master and his family were at church, uh, as mentioned in the book, Douglas began a Sunday school with 40 other black slaves. And uh, he was teaching them how to read and he was teaching them scriptural principles. Um, this went on unnoticed for six months. So he was able to, to solidify six months of time uh, teaching this group of 40 slaves uh, scripture 
and uh, and reading, right? Uh, when the slave owners found out, they beat them all harshly. Uh, they they punished them greatly. Uh, and Douglas was only around 16 when this happened. Um, as a punishment, Douglas was sent to a slave owner named Edward Covey. And Covey made it his duty. Uh, actually, he made his money by breaking unruly slaves. And so Covey beat Douglas every week for six months for no reason and treated him very harshly. And for a while, Douglas actually gave up all hope of becoming free. Um, but on August in 1835, uh, when Covey hit him, Douglas fought back. And this was a pivotal moment in, in uh, Douglas's life. Uh, he understood, okay, no, you can't do this. You don't have the right to do this to me any longer. I'm going to stand up for myself. And he continued to fight Co until Covey uh, stumbled away exhausted. And so after that point, Co Covey never tried to use violence against Douglas again. And Douglas uh, considered this to be one of the most important lessons of his life, standing up for yourself and standing up for your freedom, which is going to be uh, really the tenor of our, our talk today is, um, is learning to stand up for our, our rights, um, our identity as believers in Christ, right? Um, so uh, Frederick Douglass wrote this later. He says, there can be no independence without a large share of self-dependence. This virtue cannot be bestowed. This virtue must be developed from within. Okay. And uh, we're going to kind of unpack that quote a little bit. Um, so a couple of years later, Douglas escaped from slavery and he began to rally for the liberation of not only slaves, but the equal rights of women, First Nations people, immigrants, etc. And so there's a, a lot of take homes from his life, but we're going to focus on this whole idea of bondage and uh, escape from bondage, a uh, passion for freedom, a passion for deliverance. So uh, let's, uh, let's do this. I love this quote on the screen. I prayed for freedom for 20 years, but received no answer until I prayed with my legs. I love it. <clears throat> All right, let's talk about this. All right, so disciples of Jesus, and this is our premise for today, guys. This is our hinge. Our take home is disciples of Jesus are learning who they are in Christ and they are fighting for freedom from sin. Um, they are also helping others in their victory over bondage. OK, so a disciple in Jesus is learning who they are in Christ and they're fighting for freedom. They're fighting to attain that identity in Christ and they're also helping others in their victory over bondage. And we just have to look at Letitia's point here. Letitia says this, it's kind of cool to think of the small act that this owner's wife took to teach Douglas. She, by doing the right thing and possibly obeying God, contributed to Douglas becoming who God made him to be. We all have a role, even if we aren't the mainliner. You know, I, we know, we Solid know. Point, this yeah. is so good. This actually is kind of giving me goosebumps a little bit. So Paul, this is what Paul writes in uh, Galatians chapter 5, verse 1. And as you remember, the Propeats read this, okay? Uh, for freedom, Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. So Jesus, uh, through his shed blood on the cross, he purchased freedom for us, right? Wait a second. You guys need to open your Bibles to Galatians 5. Thank you, Charlotte. No, because it's important, right? We got to read it as we're studying or we're just going to, well, I get lost. That's all. So Galatians 5, everybody. Galatians 5. Okay. All right. So and, and we've, we've kicked it off now. Okay. Jesus has freed us from from sin. He's freed us from the penalty of sin. He is freeing us from the power of sin over our lives. That's a, a, an ongoing battle. And he is freeing us, um, and, and he will free us from the presence of sin when we get to get 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 to go into heaven. So Jesus sent us sent. He was sent on a rescue mission to re uh, release us from bondage to sin and to release us into the identity of what it means to be uh, a son and a daughter of the Most High God. Um, and so scripture tells us, for freedom, Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore. Can you stand firm passively? Can you? No. <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> you have to actively stand firm for your faith. And so there is an ongoing battle within us to either uh, fall into the traps of sin and falling into our old identity as slaves to sin uh, 
And we need to actively, just like Frederick Douglass did, actively pursue freedom, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to break that down a little bit, I think, right? Yep. So we as Christians, once you put your trust and your faith in Jesus, there is a freedom that is granted to us. That in the heavenly realms, we are now marked with the seal of the Holy Spirit, and there is a freedom that is available to us because we recognize, because we, don't mean, we may not recognize it yet, but that is what our new identity is. We are marked as a child of God. Yeah, yeah. And, so, um, and so one of Satan's strategies, a big one, uh, as he is the father of all lies, is to try and convince us that we are not free. That's right. And so... So what we're going to be working through a little bit today is that we need to actually recognize who we are and fight against our enemy in finding our freedom. Yeah. And so it's very tricky because back in the time of Frederick Douglass, it was a physical battle that they were in. They, he was held in captivity, in slavery. It was very blatant. It was obvious. He knew his battle. He knew what to fight for. But now in, in this generation, in our community, it's a very it's a discreet battle that we are in. We're not in a physical battle where we have to fight for our freedom. And so part of the trick is for Satan to go, oh, you're fine. Yeah. Oh, don't worry about it. Or, or it's pointless. It's hopeless. Don't even bother. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But what we have to realize or, is... Or we think that our continued struggle with sin is is normal, right? You know what I mean? It's like, oh, I, I'm never going to, you know, get freed from this, you know, addiction or I'm never going to get freed from this habit or I'm always just going to feel like mm -hmm. this and there's no hope for me to, you know, move forward and advance Absolutely. in my faith. And so, yeah. And so the battle is more discreet and it's sneaky, right? Um, not that I would trade this battle for the battle that Fred Frederick Douglass was facing. No. I'm not saying that at all. But what I'm saying is that, is that the enemy is very much at work trying to keep us into, in captivity. Yeah. And in, in, in a similar way, as Frederick Douglass was released from his captivity, fought for his freedom, and when he began to fight for his freedom, he was released into his mission in life. And he became a very important person in in the realization of freedom for many, many others in the same way, if we can fight our battle that Jesus has already won the victory for, and if we can begin to fight our own battle, we also become an instrument for freedom for many as we, as we love on and encourage and bring the body along, or we just, we just speak words of truth and hope like, no, you don't have to be in captivity there. Mm -hmm. there, is there is freedom. Jesus there has is paid hope. the price. Yeah. There's victory over sin. It was for freedom that Christ has set us free. Yeah. And so um, and so we're going to bat that And up. I think, honestly, too, we need to recognize that we're all in the process, again, of becoming what we are, right? And that's like the, the story of discipleship is actually mm -hmm. you becoming who you actually are in Christ. And so Christ has positionally, um, he's saved you and he's positioned you into a place that we need to, to learn how to walk in mm -hmm. right and so positionally in christ i am the righteousness of christ right i have the mind of christ mm -hmm. um i am the forgiven of christ and mm -hmm. i am a son and daughter of the most high god you're an heir you're a friend of god yeah you're... i am all those things mm -hmm. positionally that's how christ sees me mm -hmm. how i see Seated me in the heavenly realms in christ jesus yeah yeah mm -hmm. but how i see me is I struggle, you know, I'm broken. And and so what happens is sometimes that becomes our reality instead of what Christ has for us as our reality, right? Mm -hmm. And so we need to learn, just like Frederick Douglass learned uh, to read in order to attain our freedom, we need to learn our position our in true Christ. true position that we're going to find here, right? Yes, if we, absolutely. If we study the scriptures and we take to heart the things that we see here that is proclaimed over us in Jesus, then this becomes our picture of who we are. And so when the enemy tries to lie, lie at us, throw these ideas at us, we go, oh, wait a second, that doesn't line up with the truth. Yeah. That doesn't line up with God, with what God says. Yeah. And so we have a position for battle. Then we can stand, then we can stand our ground actively. Yeah. Yeah. And, not and what this does when we recognize this, it's like if this is the work of Jesus happening in us, we have a whole lot of grace for those who are still struggling along yeah, as well, absolutely. right? Because, mm -hmm. yeah, anyways, we're not going to attain that perfection as far as freedom is concerned on this side of eternity. And so we need to have grace for those 
uh, who haven't attained it yet either, right? All right. Um, so once you've learned to walk in the glorious freedom of grace, which are as you are learning to walk in the glorious freedom of grace, we are called to use our freedom uh, to love and to serve each other. And so Fred, Frederick Douglass, he used his literacy uh, to teach others how to read. Uh, and so that's the cool thing about yeah. the discipleship journey is that, you know, the freedom that we've attained, um, you know, if you've got freedom from an, an addiction or freedom from a habit um, or you've given, been given some insight as far as scripture, God has called us to use that freedom that we've attained uh, to teach other. We're not just to, supposed to hoard it to ourselves, right? Mm. We're to use it to teach others, mm. right? And so uh, Frederick Douglass used his salvation to lead others to forgiveness. He used his freedom to help others find freedom. So what about for you? Like, what is an area in your life where you have tasted this freedom or fought towards a freedom that you now feel like there is victory over that you could offer hope to others in that area? What about me? Um, we've got flickering lights now, too. Uh, like, like, let's say, okay. So let's say what about in our marriage? In our marriage, yeah. Because we went through probably a decade of significant marriage troubles yep. to the point where if we didn't make a covenant before God that we would remain married, we probably wouldn't have realistically, right? That's correct, yeah. And so, guys. Oh, storm's coming through. It's getting rainy and windy. Oh, it's getting so windy. Something just flew past the window. Um, but that, like, that's the kind of thing, right? So when we see people in like the depths of despair in their marriage, a lot of people would look at that and go, mm, yeah. well, that's hopeless. Yeah. We don't yeah. look at it and go, that's hopeless because we've been there, right? And there's victory through that. There, Jesus will can, will walk us to another, a place of health and restoration. And so so that would be one area where we have experienced the freedom of God. Sure. Where like yeah. now we want to help others to be encouraged that now there is a way to get yeah. to the other side of that. So, right? so let's go to the scripture here. It says this, uh, where are we? Galatians uh, 5 verse 13. It says, for you were called to freedom, brothers, do only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. Yeah. Okay. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, watch out that you are not consumed by one another. But I say, walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the spirit and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things that you want. But if you're led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. And so here's an interesting thing, too, about take home from uh, Frederick Douglass's life. He could have used his freedom whatever way he wanted, right? He could have used it to become bitter at the issue of slavery and oppression and just sat and died a bitter old man. Um, he could have used uh, his freedom and his literacy to start a business and grow rich. Um, he could have used his intelligence for his own advantage, but instead he used it to benefit others and help others to become free. Because he was so passionate about freedom, uh, he wanted others to experience freedom as well. Mm -hmm. And so here's a take home for us, for those of us who have tasted the freedom of Christ in our lives. Do we want to release others who um, don't know him yet? Or who know him, but have a stunted picture of who per they can yeah, be. Yeah, perhaps. Him. Yeah, yeah. But also like, it's got a um, it's got a wet in your appetite a hunger for the lost right mm -hmm. I've experienced freedom I am positionally in Christ His righteousness Well, that's what if you look at the book, remember when he said like as soon as he got to a place where he's like I long for a father mm -hmm. I don't have a father I'm lonely I'm destitute I long for a father and then he said that he heard that preacher and then he talked to that wise black man and and he was encouraged then to depend, to lean to God and that God would be his father. And yeah. remember he said that there were weeks where he just prayed and prayed and there was nothing. Yeah. And then, or not, I, I wouldn't say there was nothing, he, but he just felt still that longing and aching inside of him, but he kept going. Yeah. And then he said weeks in, all of a sudden this, I, I would just say like probably the baptism of the Holy Spirit, right? Absolutely. Like he was yeah. filled with this incredible love for people that was like an intense thing that was outside of him that came into him yeah, yeah right and so um and so it's that it's that same thing and then what does he say from there like all of a sudden all i wanted was for everyone for to everyone be converted, to know yeah, right like yeah, yeah. that 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 heavenly experience when you're a human being here on earth you've you've experienced the same thing day in and day out for the last 20 years 30 years of your life and then to have this outside encounter of some 
power or force. Yeah. That's where the magic is. You know that what is, I mean? yeah. Like, and that's actually where the power of the gospel. Taste the, and see that the Lord is good. That's where right? the power it's of the experience. gospel lies. Lies mm-hmm. right. And so again, a disciple of Jesus isn't just obsessed with their own freedom. They're obsessed with the freedom of others mm-hmm. and wanting others to come to know Him. And so again, if that's not an area in your life uh, that God has cultivated a hunger, uh, it's a prayer for you to have. God, give me a hunger for the lost. I want to be able to share. And because uh, again, a disi- uh, the role of a disciple is to make other disciples, right? Um, all right, let's. Can we keep on rocking? We can. I got some more thoughts on that, but yeah. Um, so, in the same way, our freedom isn't for our own benefit. Uh, we're to use it to move people towards the freedom found in Christ. Our flesh would move us back into bondage instead of continually rallying for freedom our for flesh ourselves. Would move us back into bondage. Yeah. Instead of continually rallying for freedom for ourselves and others. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay, so we're going to go to the next section here. And I, I love the the book of Galatians. It actually dovetails so nicely here with Frederick Douglass's life, right? Uh, because we see it lived out in his life kind of in the practical sort of way that it is. And then we're seeing application coming to us from... Uh, from scripture here. So then uh, Paul in the passage in uh, Galatians chapter 5, he lifts two different groups of fruit, okay? Um, so there's two different groups of the fruit. We always learn about the fruit of the spirit, but we, we don't learn so much about the fruit of the flesh, okay? Um, so one list of fruit is the fruit that is evidence, uh, evident in those who are still in bondage to sin, okay? And then the other is for those who have been freed from sin. So it says this in verse 19, Galatians 5 verse 19. Do you want to read it? When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. So when you follow the flesh, these are the results. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild party, other sin uh, and other sins like these. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. There you go. So if you haven't noticed, there's actually three different groups of sins here. OK. And so for those of uh, those people who are struggling with bondage to sin still, which is really every believer, um, these sort of sins disrupt three different relationships, three different key relationships that uh, Christians are cultivating in their lives. The three relationships are this. So the first group of sins are sins of pleasure. Um, they are immorality, impurity, sensuality, drunkenness, and orgies. Okay, and what these are, uh, sins do is they affect our relationship with ourselves, and they keep us in bondage to shame. So what they do is they feed us lies that say you are not a son of the uh, the Most High God. Uh, it instills shame in us. Uh, and it distorts our own self-image, okay? So whenever we uh, engage in these sort of acts, Satan heaps shame on us so that we don't feel about ourselves how Christ feels about ourselves, okay? You get it? Yep. Second group of sins are sins of rebellion against God. So uh, other things other than God are, are become our masters, and so that's idolatry and sorcery. So idolatry, we can talk about, you know, our addiction to money, our addiction to pleasure, uh, our addiction to comfort, right? Those are the idols of our Western world. Um, and then sorcery is looking for uh, sources of power in other things other than God, okay? And these, these things, these types of sins, they undermine our relationship with God and they exalt another way other than him, okay? So they become the power that we're living for. They become our good news, right? And then the third things are a sins of division, okay? And those are enmity, strife, jealousy, anger, rivalries, dissensions, and divisions. These are works of the flesh. These are works of sin. And what those do is they disrupt our relationship with others. So we have disruption of relationship with self, disruption of relationship with God, and disruption of relationship with others, right? They exalt self at the expense of unity, destroying relationships with others. And so if any of these sins are present in your life, then you're called to fight uh, for freedom against them, right? And so they are they are markers for us. If I identify any of those things in my life, then Jesus is calling me to uh, pursue freedom from those areas, right? Do you have anything to say? Um, yeah, I think, well, I don't know what our next point is, so I don't know if it would fit in better 
here or somewhere else? Oh, well, the next point is the the fruit of the spirit. Okay. Well, what I what I'm thinking about is just the fact that we have a lot going on in our minds too that like are even aside from sin, right? So we have we have sinful tendencies that we have to fight against, but we also have um, our self-image and our thoughts and our perspective that we have to fight against too. Absolutely, right? where the enemy it is, all starts in the, in the right, mind. Where right? the enemy is at work in, on all those levels as well, and that I think is an area of freedom that we have to fight for as believers too. Right. That I mean, it's pretty obvious that we don't want to get caught up in sin. It's also, according to the scriptures, we don't want to get caught up in the law. So we have to find this balance in between the law and the sin, right. and sin where we're where we're just living out the righteousness of Christ and actually it being says led that, by the spirit, right? It says that here. And, uh, but we who live by the spirit eagerly wait to receive by faith, the righteousness God has promised to us. So we know that there's this righteousness that's there and that we can receive it by faith, right? Yeah. Not by striving, not by works, right. but by believing that Jesus is big enough to bring the freedom to us. Right. Yep, yep. And then it says, for when we place our faith in Christ Jesus, there is no benefit in being circumcised or being uncircumcised. What is important is faith expressing itself in love. Oh, beautiful. Right? Yeah. So it's like this heart thing that is happening in us as we just keep our eyes on Jesus and we take our eyes off of um, the law. We take our eyes off of the sin. We keep our eyes on Jesus, mm -hmm. the author and perfecter of our faith. And we say to him, okay, you are the one who can grant me the freedom from both of these things. Yeah. And yeah. so we keep our eyes on you and we want to live it out in love. And you just, you love like Jesus loved. And if you can get that down, you know what I mean? Then yeah. that's going to win a lot of yeah. battles. But then also with our thinking, we have um, an incredible battle that's going on there where we, where we think too highly of ourselves or we think too low of ourselves. And I wrote down some of the lines from the one song we sang. I don't know what song it is because um, I'm not a details person. Um, simple gospel. Okay, so remember, like, I've been told that I'm not good enough. I've been told that I don't measure up. And and then it's this picture of, like, and how many of us, and maybe you've never been told. Like, I can't remember ever being told, which, thank God, right? Like, I'm sure some of you have been told that verbally out loud by somebody. You're not good enough. You don't measure up. Um, but regardless of whether I've been told or not, I believe those things about myself, yeah, right? right? I believe yeah. that I'm not good enough. I the believe enemy I whispers don't it in. Yeah. because I'm being told one way or another. Yeah. And so we we have to recognize there's a battle to be fought there in that level, in that realm, that we need to reject those th thoughts and embrace the truth of who Jesus has said I am, right? Yeah. Handcrafted, created, intentional. And so those three things, it doesn't mean you have to be, you know, intellectual it doesn't mean you have to be in order it doesn't mean you have to have all this like understanding and depth of wisdom what it means is maybe you have 20 minutes a day where you can sneak away and teach a slave the alphabet yeah, you know what yeah, i mean yeah, like yeah, it's yeah. it's that we are created intentionally for a marked purpose that god has for us and so it, we don't have to be something special we just have to be who we were created to be hmm. right yeah. and so i think that that's an important battle that we have to fight in our minds too is recognizing our identity as a Christ follower is being okay with who God created, God us, created to be. us to be. Yeah. See what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. That's so good. Mm -hmm. So oh, again, and then it says the, the conclusion of that bit of song of song was no amount of untruths can separate us from God's love. Amen. Right? It's yeah. like so good. Keep the lies coming because I know the truth, kind yeah. of thing. Right? So again, this is why we have to embrace again our our position in Christ. Like mm -hmm. uh, like Frederick Douglass understood. Okay, I was not destined to be a slave. I was destined to be free. That's right. And so to so the lies to live coming in that. at him, and he had to step out of it yeah. because he because he began to hear this. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. Anyways, so the acts of the the identifying acts of slavery are those things. So when you see some of these things crop up in your thinking, crop up in your life, uh, this is a, a signal for you to work towards freedom in those areas. Uh -huh. Um, they're not the fruit of the spirit, right? They're the opposite. They're the, the fruit of the flesh. Okay, and then uh, after this, Paul lists the fruit of the spirit. And he says this in verse 22, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions 
and desires. And so these are the fruit that God is cultivating in us. Again, as we submit ourselves to his work, as we submit ourselves and say, like, okay, so again, the discipleship life is not a passive life, okay? It's not a life where you just wander through aimlessly and just not really engage. Uh, you don't know yourself, you know what I mean? You need to know yourself. And when God highlights areas of your life that he would like to work on in you, you say, okay, Jesus, I would like for you to develop, you know, patience in me. I would like you to develop um, like a confidence in my own uh, position instead of being envious of others or jealous of others, right? Um, I want you to develop uh, confidence in our relationship, God, so I don't have to strive for the approval of others or mm -hmm. be disappointed by these things, right? And so um, Jesus gives us indicators and he's like, okay, these are the fruit that I want you to, de to develop in your, in, in your life. And these fruit um, are evidence of our freedom, okay? Yeah. Um, wow, that was close. So uh, We're doing good. We got lights. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. There's no law against these. And these are the things that God is developing in you. And these are the things that are evidence of your freedom in Christ. And these are things that are evident in the life of Frederick Douglass. There is no struggle. Uh, if there is no struggle, there's no progress. And so as Christians, the, the role of a discipleship is we are pursuing, actively pursuing freedom from these things that are holding us away from our attaining our true identity in Christ. And we are leaving those things behind. We're leaving, leaving the works of the flesh behind. And we're doing it in community and relationship with others. We need each other uh, to point out things. We all have blind spots, right? And, uh, and Jesus wants to free us up. And anyway, so I mean... Mm -hmm. Do you have anything to, to kind of cap things off? Because that's where I was kind of wanting to ha hang my hat. Well, as far I'll as say this because this is something that's stri striking me right now for my own application. Sometimes <clears throat> I feel like um, I want to be relatable to the world. So I'm I'm a pursuer of Jesus. The world knows that about me. But I also think, and I and you guys have heard me talk about this before, to like to be very honest and transparent with people that you're ministering to or that you're witnessing to, so they know my struggle. But what I'm realizing right now, like, and I've been thinking about it a bit lately because of these fruit of the spirit remember for pastor appreciation um you guys gave me a, a hoodie with the fruit of the spirit on it um and so i've been wearing that shirt lately and and it kind of made me think of it because i'm at the cottage and i'm with my family and um and many of them are unbelievers and i'm wearing my shirt and i'm thinking like i wonder if they see these things in me mm. and then i recognize oh i'm often relating to the struggle right like oh i had a hard time with this or this is challenging for me or whatever and i think it's good for me to be transparent with them that they would see that i'm a real person and i struggle and whatever but what i'm realizing is do i major on the struggle and not major on, on the, the freedom. fruit yeah. right and yeah. the freedom and yeah. the beauty that comes in jesus and like maybe i need to focus on that more you know what I mean? To let that out of me a little bit instead of being like, yes, I have all these things. I'm so grateful for them, but things can still be really, you know what I mean? Like yeah. to try and find that balance try a to little find bit the balance. more yeah. in the victory because the, the, the struggle's there, the burden's there, but we also have the victory, right? Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, just something I'm a take it home. Maybe that will be a take it home for you too. For I don't sure. know, but for me, that's something that I'm. So we're going to wrap things up there. Um, but again, as Christians, uh, you have been uh, called to freedom, right? Mm -hmm. It was for freedom that Christ has set you free. So he wants you to attain to the freedom and the identity that he purchased for you. And so as Christians, just like Douglas, we are freedom fighters, right? Yeah. We're fighting for our own freedom, yeah. fighting for free from freedom, uh, for freedom from, you know, anger and jealousy and strife and all these things that, that try to trip us up. the outward sins of our flesh, Absolutely. selfishness and greed and yeah. Yeah. sexual immorality. All those things. Uh, and so Jesus uh, is wanting to develop the fruit of the Spirit within us. And um, just in the same way that Frederick Douglass actively had to pursue his own freedom, we need to do the same, right? Um, he didn't just have to go to his masters and say, hey, would you free me? You know, and expect them to do all the work. No, yeah. there, there he, was an act he, of struggle, right? There's an act of struggle as far as him working out his freedom right. and we need to do the same we are in a, a fallen broken world and the enemy is actively trying to keep us in bondage and so we need to put one foot in front of the other and uh it says this again uh there is there can be no independence without a large share of self-dependence this virtue cannot be bestowed the, this virtue must be developed from within mm -hmm. and then that quote again where he's where he talked about like i prayed for 20 years for freedom and then i prayed with my legs yeah right yeah. and it's and and that has always been um 
the message message of Jesus, yeah. right? Depend on me and live it out. Go and sin no more. Yeah. There is there is a the hitch effect. There is a responsibility of Jesus to us, which He has fulfilled. But there is a responsibility of us to honor the things Jesus had said. Precisely. And that is when we begin to, to pray with our feet, yeah. when we pray with our legs, right? When, yeah, we, yeah. when we do some self-dependence where we're like, okay, Jesus, you've told me to live this way. I'm going to test it out. I'm going to make that step. I'm going to do that initial thing and see how that turns out. And then just begin to trust that living his way will bring the freedom. Yeah, that's right. right? That's good. All right. Thanks, Shara. Okay, so let's close in prayer and then I'll run the announcements. Uh, we do have the after party on Zoom. So if anybody can join us there, we would love that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Jesus, thank you for today. Um, thank you that the power didn't go out. Yeah. Um, I pray that you would bless everybody who is listening to this. Uh, I pray that they would become passionate about pursuing the freedom in Christ, mm -hmm. uh, attaining to the identity that you purchased mm -hmm. for them. And the God, fruit of the Spirit. And the fruit of the Spirit. Bubble right? up in us. Yeah. Lord. And so thank you for the life of Frederick Douglass, God, for all that he did, how uh, an example of not only fighting for his own freedom, but for the freedom of others. Give us that passion as well uh, to win souls and, and show people your, um, your truth and your goodness. Uh, thank you, God. Bless this congregation this week. Mm -hmm. They are awesome. Mm -hmm. It was so much fun last night. I'm looking forward to seeing them and being with all of them, God, in, uh, in the near future. So thanks, God. You're good. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you, folks. Um, can you repost uh, that? Oh, that's that the quote. quote. Yes, I will do that. All right, here are the announcements again. Bless you, folks. We'll see you soon.